uh, Ken, I think you're the, the first one up on the, the block here. Yes, thank you very much, Russ. So Ken Hatcher from uh, Raytheon Technologies, which for those who may not be unaware, was a merger between UTC and Raytheon, um, kind of represented across four different companies, Raytheon Missiles Defense, Raytheon Intelligent Space, Pratt Whitney and Collins Aerospace. Um, been serving about 20 plus years within the quality, different, different functions everywhere from, um, you know, hardware, software, and supplier quality over the past 20 plus years I've been within within Raytheon and right now Raytheon Technologies. And so what we're gonna discuss a little bit today, it's gonna be high level, go to the next slide, um, Carl. You know, we're gonna cover kind of a high level kind of, hey, you know, when you think of APQP and PPAP and those terms get thrown out a lot lately, you know, how does uh, 13, the AS 13,100 kind of fit in within AS 9145? Now, this is going to be a high level review. We're not going to know this isn't going to be you know, line by line, kind of what the changes, uh, the deltas are, but kind of highlight, you know, where you can go to get that information and kind of how the, you know, between the 13,100 uh, chapter B and some of the reference uh, material can help you with implementation within this particular work set. So go ahead, sir. So when you think about it from a foundational aspect, you know, uh, the you know a AS, ASQ you know wanted to simplify just the numerous amounts of kind of different requirements out there. I think all of us within you know whether we're working on programs, um, and just when the, you know working on the program level or within quality or with you know e help even within some other organizations, you know there are you know regulatory requirements. There's also QMS requirements. There's contractor requirements. There's international standards. So the goal overall was kind of harmonize that effort and, and kind of determine, you know, how can we simplify this within the aerospace engine supplier quality working group and within that organization, how can we simplify it? So therefore you can kind of go to one place in order to figure out what are you going to go do to help, you know, ensure re these requirements are met. And, and at the end of the day, ensuring that you reduce risk and are producing compliant product to the, to the end customer from there. And ultimately, you know, that's where the 13,100 standard comes into play at the end of the day. Next slide, please. So when you think about it, you know, 9145, you know, it, it covers that APQP and that PPAP model, you know, it covers aviation, space and defense. You know, it's, it's a lot, it's a little bit broader. Um, you know, it's covering multiple different, you know, um, businesses um, out there. However, what really, you know, when you think about, it, okay, really, that 13,100, that fits within within our community, within the AESSQ community. And the other thing that was provided is there's just not a standard in place. And of course, you know, AS9145, if you go to the IAQG website, it provides enablers and such. But what also is in the AS13,100 is a chapter B and also reference material. Um, one of the best thing is, uh, that is there is that like on slide five, the um, the reference material, you know, 30,145, it provides kind of detail. Hey, here's where you can go to find the additional detailed information you need on how a particular, um, either a particular process or how a particular organization supports that, um, you know, those particular deliverables within the five phases of, of APQP. And if that kind of, you know, tailored level of requirements, it kind of provides the detail you need to figure out, okay, what's the difference, especially within the, uh, the chapter B, Going, going forward. So, and kind of, if you look at it, uh, next slide. If you look at it, you know, really what it comes down to is trying to provide good practices, best practices going forward for simply just providing requirements. You know, what is actually out there and available for you to figure out, okay, how can I implement that within the group? You know, um, the 13,100 and off of it's, it's RM, you know, provides a good process flow, especially if you go into section six and section seven, it gives you that level of detail saying, here's who's responsible for this particular phase. Here's how this would work within a, whether it's a product life cycle or transition to production, or you're utilizing material readiness levels saying, how does this fit there? And here's who's responsible for it. Here are the deliverables and here's how you can go carry this out. And it provides a little bit more clarity on the AS9145 content. And like I talked about that, that page five in the um, in the RM130, uh, 13145 document, that also links to other reference material that is out there that helps you support meeting the AS13100 standard. 
Um, and then at the same time, you know, you know that improved APQP management, there's a RACI in there. I know across with even within our Raytheon technologies, there is a quite a bit of discussion who's responsible for what. Once again, this presents kind of a best practice on, you know, when these events occur, who's, who's the primary responsibility, but also who supports going forward. And also that PPAP management level, you know, the use of, of submission levels, clarification, um, you know, when does the data need to be collected? And also, when does resubmission? Um, one of the things we will get into later on here, it talks about, you know, when do you have to go back and resubmit particular data? Is it on just a new product or what type of major changes take place? That gets put in there also, kind of that provides some guidelines and best practice and what to go do. And at the end of the day, you know, it, the goal of all this is providing that ro robust processes and methods that are out there to ensure, you know, that we can be compliant for this, kind of provide that one voice and here's what you need to go do. So we're not trying to have to pull for multiple documents and, at the same, and maybe even sometimes having some conflicting information. Therefore, we can go to one place, find, hey, this is what we need to go do. If we go do this, we can meet these requirements overall going forward. Next slide. And with that, that's kind of a high level view. I'll give it off to Dan. 